Mayday, 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 this is Simon Blue, Simon Blue, Simon Blue. I'm in Hamworthy, Port Harbour, I've lost the man overboard, and I've lost sight of him, I don't know. Mayday, 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 One of the very real dangers when you're at sea is the possibility of going overboard. Now we all like to think that it won't happen to us, but the fact is it does happen and often. One of the biggest dangers of going overboard is the immediate effects to the body of hitting the water. It's called cold water shock and it's by far the biggest cause of death in marine accidents. It doesn't matter how strong, fit, thin, fat, old or young you are, it could well happen to you. In this programme, we're going to look at how the body reacts to sudden immersion in cold water, how to improve your chances of surviving, and how to respond if you or one of your crewmates does go over the side. If you've never fallen overboard before, then it's hard to imagine the effects that cold water has on the body. So that's what we're going to look at first. We're here on HMS Belfast, now permanently moored on the Thames. With me is Mike Tipton. He is a world expert on cold water survival and the effects of cold water on the human body. Mike oversaw an experiment for us at the University of Portsmouth, which will help demonstrate what happens to your body when you go overboard. The Royal Marines lent us this chap for the day. He's called Luke and as you can see, he's as fit as a flea. During his six years in the Marines, Luke has spent time in the Arctic and has done this exercise twice. So if anyone has experience of operating in cold water, it's him. Mike and his team covered Luke in sensors, dressed him in waterproofs and then immersed him in this tank of cold water. The water in the tank is kept at a constant temperature of 12 degrees centigrade, which is the average sea temperature around Britain. Mike, what exactly happens to the body as soon as it's immersed in water of this temperature? Well, the cold water very quickly makes the skin temperature drop and you get some dramatic responses. Your heart rate shoots up, blood pressure shoots up, but most important of all, you lose control of your breathing. You start to hyperventilate or overbreathe, and you can't hold your breath anymore. So normally you can hold your breath for about a minute in air. That drops down to just a few seconds when you hit cold water. So the dangers of drowning are increasing by the minute? Absolutely, because you've only got to take about two to three pints of water in the lung. That's about a third of a normal breath in, and you've passed the lethal volume for drowning. So that's immediate. What happens, what happens next? Well, if you survive that phase, and sadly many don't, you then go on to the next phase, short-term phase, where your nerves and muscles, particularly in the arms and legs, start to cool, and you lose the ability to do things like swim, to help yourself, to you know, open a flare, to do all those kinds of emergency actions that you need to do to ensure your survival. Now we can see here that Luke is trying to swim, but it's not working. Well, that's because the water now is cooling his nerves and muscles in his arms and legs. And what that happens there is you get weaker. You also get tired very quickly. You lose coordination. All these things add together to mean that even very competent swimmers are unable to swim anything like the distances or with the same proficiency as they can in warm water. How long does it take to get to that stage when you lose coordination? Oh, it can happen as quickly as 15 to 20 minutes. And classically, you see it by somebody being horizontal in the water when they first start swimming. And as they become fatigued, as they become uncoordinated, they become more and more upright. And the last thing is they're upright, just struggling to keep their airways clear of the water. All right, well, let's see how Luke is feeling. From the start, it was okay. I started to, started to swim. Instantly, you feel your blood start to come away from your hands and your feet. You don't have as much control as usual. Uh, then the cold started setting in hot deeper down inside. Um, feel coordination start going. Um, your lips, uh, jaw start getting jaw ache along here. Um, eyes, eyes become quite dreary. Your blinks become longer. Luke's done this before, so we asked him how this compared to his Arctic training. Actually, having to do something as opposed to just static in the water, and then uh, you know say a few things and drag yourself out, is a lot easier compared to actually having to um, sort of like, I suppose simulate fighting for your life really, swimming. Uh, uh, especially with clothing on as well, so uh, it, it's amazing how, how much the clothing itself, how thick it is, actually stops your movement. So there's the harsh truth, if you do go into the water, the chances are you'll be in serious danger of dying. No matter how fit you think you are, you won't beat the sea. So how prepared you are and how you react if you fall in could make the difference between life and death, maybe even your life and death. So prepare, take care and wear a life jacket. Yeah.